Okay, good evening. This is the last two tests that we're going to learn in this section. And the ratio test and the root test. The ratio test is, is very important in what we do. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we understand the ratio test completely. The root test is a nifty little test. However, um, it is not on the AP exam. But you can still use it if, if you see the opportunity to. But the ratio test is very valuable when we start looking at um, interval of convergence, which we will do next unit. So this is the ratio test. This can be found on page 12 of your notes. So basically, we're going to take the, if we have a series, a sub n, and the series has had non-zero terms, if we take a sub n plus 1, and yesterday I kind of showed you how to look at a, a sub n plus 1, and divide it by the original series. If we take the limit as it approaches infinity and it's less than 1, the series converges. If we look at the absolute value and um, we take a sub n plus 1, a sub n, if it's greater than 1 or if it's equal to infinity, then it is said to diverge. a sub n diverges. However, we have to be familiar with sometimes we may get 1 when we take the limit, and then that is said that the, uh, the ratio test is inconclusive and we have to use another test. Let's do an example. So we always want to start by doing the nth term test. No matter what we do, the nth term test is always where we start. So when I do the nth term test, I know that n factorial grows faster than 2 sub n, so the limit is going to be 0. So now that I'm going to go to another test, and we're going to try the ratio test. So basically what it says, we have to take the limit as n approaches infinity of 2 to the n plus 1, because um, remember it's a sub n plus 1, over n plus 1 factorial divided by 2 to the n over n factorial. Now after we do this for a while, I'm going to kind of skip this step and just write it like this, the limit as n approaches infinity of 2 to the, now let's go ahead and simplify this. 2 to the n plus 1 is 2 to the n times 2 to the first power. n factorial, n plus 1 factorial would be n plus 1 times n factorial. And then I'm multiplying by this reciprocal, so this is n factorial over 2 to the n. Now, we can already see some things are going to start canceling. So as I'm taking this limit, the 2 to the nth cancel. Uh, what else cancels? The n factorial cancels. So then I am left with the limit as n approaches infinity of 2 is still there, n plus 1. And as the limit, as this goes towards infinity, this goes towards 0. So because 0 is less than 1, the, the rule states that if I take this limit and it's less than 1, then it converges. So therefore, this will converge absolutely. Okay. All righty. Let's do the next one. So once again, I want to do the nth term test first. And the nth term test tells me because 3 to the n grows faster than 2 to the n, um, but which also will grow faster than n squared, that as I do the nth term test, it goes to 0. Um, the limit is 0, so therefore I'm free to use another test. So um, we're going to start by taking the limit as n approaches infinity, and we're going to add 1 to all of the n's. Uh, and I'm dividing that by the original series. So let's simplify this using a little bit of algebra. I get n plus 1. This becomes 2 to the nth times 2 to the um, second power 
because I have to add one to this, so this becomes two to the second power over three to the nth times three. And then I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of this. So three to the n goes to the top, and then I have n squared times two to the nth times two. Well, let's see what cancels out. Uh, the two to the n's cancel. The three to the n cancel. Um, this becomes mm -hmm. two squared over two. This becomes just two in the top and three in the bottom. Um, and so then, um, did my n's cancel? No. So I have two times mm -hmm. n plus one over three n squared. And I'm taking the limit as n approaches infinity. And we can see if I did this correctly, I did not. This should be n squared. So when we go to the limit, this will cancel with that as well, because that was originally n squared. I missed my squared here. So the n plus 1 and the n squared would sort of cancel with each other as we go to infinity. So what we're left with is the, li uh, the limit as n approaches infinity of 2 thirds, which is 2 thirds. But again, 2 thirds is less than 1. And so since 2 thirds is less than 1, less than 1, this converges. Okay, looking at the next one, we always start with the nth term test. So remember what I said the first day. n to the n grows faster than n factorial. So since the faster growing function is on top, we're going to go ahead and just say that this diverges because it, it passes the nth term test, if you will. We got something, we got infinity. This will go towards infinity. Therefore, the whole thing diverges. And we don't have to do anything else. Okay. So for this one, we want to do the nth term test. So the nth term test, the limit as n goes towards infinity, is zero. So um, now we're free to use the ratio test. So once again, it's going to be radical n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus 1 divided by radical n over n plus 1 and the limit. Now when you're doing these, I am a stickler. You have to say it's the limit as n goes towards infinity. If you do not write that, I will take off. And this could be on a the free response part of your test. So um, the ratio test can show up on part of the free response question, as part of a free response question. So that'll give me the limit as n approaches infinity of radical n plus 1 over n plus 1. Well, I guess I could just write that as n plus 2, if you like. And then multiply by the reciprocal, I get n plus 1 over radical n. So as n goes towards infinity, these two are tracking together. So that's going to give me 1. And these two are tracking together. So that's going to give me 1. So what happens when I get 1? Well, the, the ratio test is inconclusive. So does that mean I can just say inconclusive? Absolutely not. I have to do another test. So another test that may work well here may be the limit comparison test. As a matter of fact, I think we did this in class in second period today. So let's use, now we have to use the limit comparison test. So we would do, um, um, looking at the top term here and the top term here, I'm going to get 1 over n to the 1 half, which diverges. So that's what I'm comparing it with. So I get radical n over n plus 1 over uh, 1 over radical n is 1 over radical n. And this is the limit as n approaches infinity. Make sure you write that. And so that will give me the limit as n approaches infinity of uh, radical n over n plus 1 times radical n over 1. And this time, when I do the limit, I get 1. But because I'm using the limit comparison test, 1 is an acceptable answer. So there, since 1 over the square root of n diverge, this will diverge as well. 
Okay, you have um, two additional problems to do. If you want to take a minute and pause this and do those problems, I would recommend that and come back in a minute. Okay, let's quickly do these. Um, again, uh, if term test tells me I have to do another test because the limit is zero. So then I'm going to do the limit as n approaches infinity of 3 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial times. Now I'm just going to go ahead and multiply by the reciprocal because that's where we're going. So we do the limit as n approaches infinity of 3 to the nth times 3 over n plus 1 times n factorial times n factorial over 3 to the n. And once again, um, let's see, the 3 to the n's cancel, the n factorials cancel. So I'm left with the limit as n approaches infinity of 3 over n plus 1, and that limit is 0. So since the limit is less than 1, we say this converges, absolutely. Again, um, the, where we want to start is the nth term test. Now notice that this is alternating. This is an alternating series. But if I have three halves raised to the nth, this is exponential and this is a polynomial. Well, we know that an exponential will grow faster than a polynomial. So this diverges. We can either say it diverges by the nth term test or we can say it diverges by the alternating series test. But in any case, it diverges, and that's all we have to do. Okay? So that is it for the ratio test. Please take a moment and watch the root test.